the majority of the people today are not prepared for economic hardship or supply chain issues. So I'm gonna share with you my top five survival crops that are gonna make you more prepared than almost everybody else if you plant them. There are five criteria that these crops need to have in order to make this list. Number one, they need to be easy to grow. Number two, they need to be easy to preserve because you don't wanna spend a lot of time in a survival situation worrying about how you're gonna preserve your crops you work so hard to grow. Number three, a good amount of nutrients and calories. You need them both. Number four, no special tools or equipment in order for these crops to thrive. In other words, you don't need a combine or something like that to make this stuff happen. Just simple tools in a backyard garden will work. Number five, and maybe this is the most important one, they can be grown in most growing zones. In other words, tropical fruit won't make this list because those aren't gonna work in many growing zones. Crop number one on this list are potatoes. Potatoes are the easiest crop to grow and everybody can grow potatoes pretty much in any climate. They're so easy to grow that you can put them in literally any kind of container. We've grown them in this container before, as you can see, the holes are drilled out of there. You can grow them in regular buckets. We've done that and that's worked out. We have grow bags where we grow potatoes in every year. You can go to the grocery store and grab an organic potato, put it in your soil somewhere, and it's gonna make more potatoes. Just make sure they're covered and the sun doesn't have access to the potato. It's really, really easy to grow. The potato has kept thousands of people alive in Europe. So it's a survival crop, not just because it makes this list, but it literally kept civilizations alive during hard times in the past. This spot where I'm standing is where we planted potatoes last year. And the thing is, we never actually buried them in the soil like you typically do with potatoes. We literally just laid them out on the ground on top of the soil and put about 12 inches of mulch leaves that we collect from our yard behind our lawnmower, put those on top of the potatoes and we had an abundance of potatoes in such a small spot. We had more potatoes planting them that way than we've ever had before. We did the same thing in this bed over here. So if you're concerned about size or where you're gonna place them or if you need to raise bed or not or in ground bed, you don't need to worry about that because you can just put some buckets on your patio or grow bags or have a small space like a four by eight area just with soil and put leaves or even hay on top of them. It's called the roost out method. You don't actually need to bury them in the ground. So you have tons of options, which is why potatoes are really good survival crops. They also store really well. You can can them, you can freeze them. That's one way to preserve them. But if you don't want to do that, you can just put them in a cold, dark basement like we do, and they're going to preserve for about six to seven months. Generally, there are two types of potatoes, short season potatoes and long season potatoes. Long Long season potatoes take much longer than short season potatoes. However, in my experience, you get bigger harvests if you plant long season potatoes. We plant ours in the beginning of May, we harvest them at the end of August or beginning of September, and we get more potatoes with those types of potatoes. So in a survival situation, being able to harvest potatoes at different times throughout the years using short season and long season could be an interesting idea. The second survival crop I recommend you grow our green beans. We use this entire arch trellis to grow our green beans. It's beautiful because we can come out here and harvest almost all season long. You can harvest fresh green beans during the season, or if you dry them out, you can use the dried beans in the off season or when it's cold out or when it's winter. What I mean by having dried beans in the winter is that if you harvest enough of these, these save for a really long time and you can use these all winter long. So fresh beans in the summer, dried beans in the winter. It's a great survival crop for that reason alone. Now there's two types of green beans. There are bush beans and there are pole beans. Pole beans trellis up things. Bush beans are on the ground and they're about 18 to 24 inches tall and you plant them all over. We love pole beans because pole beans seem to offer a bigger harvest and we like trellising things because not only does it look great, but it's good for disease resistance. It's good for getting air flowing through the plant. You can harvest things, you can manage pests easier. So we like to use this arch trellis behind us for that specific reason. You can see these dried beans right here from last season that we left up there. Crop number three is winter squash. Winter squash like acorn, butternut squash like this one, spaghetti squash. The best reason to grow winter squash other than nutrients and calories is because they last a really long time in cold storage. It is now April and we've had these in our basement since the end of August, beginning of September, and they're in perfect condition. You want a hard rind squash, like a butternut squash, 
or an acorn or a spaghetti squash. There are other varieties too because they're going to last a really long time. I know people that keep these for over a year and they're still good. You've got these for a long time no matter what and you don't have to freeze them, can them, dehydrate them. You literally put them on a shelf in your basement in a dark area. If it's a little cooler it's better but it's going to preserve for a very long time. Not to mention these trellis really easy and you can grow them on the ground. We trellis ours on our arch trellises. It's beautiful, it makes it easier to harvest, manage pests, and all of that stuff. So we love butternut squash, spaghetti squash, and acorn squash for that reason. It's an excellent survival crop. And if you don't like squash, I challenge you to look into different recipes. As a matter of fact, we made mac and cheese with this. It's very good. We've made dip for chips. We make soup. It's very, very good in all different areas. Sometimes we just put it on a pan in our oven and eat it as a side dish. So we love having this food. If you have kids, this is a great thing for young kids who are learning how to eat real food. This is a great thing for that as well if you have a growing family. Survival crop number four is cabbage. Cabbage isn't typically a survival crop you're gonna see people talking about too much. But I want to say that it's a very, very good survival crop because of how easy it is to manage after you harvest it, and you do get a lot per plant. As a matter of fact, these ones right here, this specific kind, is a huge cabbage. It's supposed to get 14 pounds, absolutely massive. So if you have 30 plants of this, that is a lot of cabbage for you to have, and therefore there's a lot of sauerkraut for you to make. Sauerkraut is an excellent way to preserve cabbage because you literally only need two ingredients, salt and water. And homemade sauerkraut, you can manage the taste and the flavor based on how long you ferment it in your glass jar or crock or however you want to do that. Having cabbage in your garden is a really, really great thing because it's a cold weather crop. Cold weather crops can tolerate frost. Therefore, you can start them very early in the spring like we're about to next week. We have about 30 cabbage plants that we're gonna transplant out into this garden next week. They're growing right now inside the house. And you can also extend their season so you can have maybe a second crop of cabbage because it's a cold weather crop past your first frost in the fall. And for us, we get that like in September, but if we can be growing things into October or maybe even the middle, the beginning of November, that's a huge plus for us and that extends our growing season in a survival situation. You want as much time as you possibly can to grow certain crops. Survival crop number five is carrots. Carrots don't make survival lists very much. Carrots are excellent because you can preserve them really well by freezing you can preserve them by canning, and they do last a long time if you preserve them properly in cold storage. We grow two different types of carrots, and the benefit of growing carrots is that you can plant them literally anywhere. They're an excellent space-saving crop. In a similar way to cabbage, carrots are also cold weather crops. I planted some carrots last October that I'm expecting to harvest like this June because you can overwinter them if they stay in the ground. So you can go out there, dig up underneath the snow, I'm not joking, in the winter, dig up the snow and pull out some carrots and probably eat them and they're most likely going to be just fine. If you know anything about our garden here on our homestead, we like to have a diverse amount of plants that grow together. We love intercropping and diversity in our garden, and we put carrots everywhere. If I've got a small six inch little row, I'm gonna throw some carrot seeds in there. If we've got a little corner in a raised bed that's not being occupied, put carrots there because they grow straight up, got these wispy little tops. They don't take up a lot of space. They grow straight down. It's an excellent crop if you've got little pockets and areas in your garden. Carrots are one of the last things we plant just because of that. We do that because we want to plant the bigger crops that take up more space, and then we want to plant our carrots in random spots. There is a section of our garden, about four feet by two feet, where we do intensely plant a lot of carrots, and we get a big harvest from that. If you planted this entire bed with good seed and had the whole thing intensely planted with carrots, like really close together, and they did well, this could easily take care of your needs for one year for the average family. You would be shocked how many carrots you can get from this small amount of space right here. If you watch other survival videos, you'll notice that corn makes people's lists. If I had a top 10, it might make that, but definitely not my top five. And the reason is because it's a very heavy feeder, which means it takes a lot of nutrients from the soil and it requires a lot of space to get a lot of corn. So your harvest isn't really that great in a small amount of space. And some of you might not have a small space. In a survival situation, you need every inch you can take. So growing corn just doesn't make a lot of sense. It is high in calories. You can get cornmeal from it. There are some pros and cons, but for me, if I had to pick five crops, corn just doesn't make the list just for that reason. The other crop that I really struggled with 
for this list is sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. I love growing sweet potatoes. We love eating them here. However, they don't grow really well in northern climates. They require warm soil. They require a really long season, which we don't have here. The reason why we can grow them here in Wisconsin is because I start them indoors. They've been started now for several weeks in my house, and it requires a long season that's pretty hot. And if you want to have a really good harvest, you need really warm climate, and it needs to be a really long warm climate. It can't just be warm for a little bit because the potatoes need so much time to develop. Sweet potatoes are healthier than regular potatoes. I'll give them that. There are better nutrients, higher in fat. And the really great benefit of sweet potatoes is that you can eat the vines. So you've got the nutrients from the vines as well as the tubers. And that's a really, really great thing if you're looking for nutrients to feed your body, especially when you're limited to what your body's taking in in your survival situation. So it's not that I'm against sweet potatoes. Like I said, we love growing them here. We have had success growing them here in the past. They're just difficult to grow for a lot of people. If you're trying to survive, you want things that are easy, things that don't take a lot of work, things that grow well in your climate. And they don't grow well in a lot of climates. They grow well in southern climates, warm climates. So potatoes, on the other hand, grow well in pretty much every climate, which is why they made this list. And sweet potatoes did not. If you could come up with a top five list of your survival crops based on your experience and research and in your opinion, put that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Maybe your top five lines up with mine a little bit. Maybe I learned something new and I change it, make a new video because something bumped it out of the top five because you gave me a good suggestion. And let's face it, a lot of us don't have the space to grow things that we like to grow. We've got small city lots, or we've got balcony gardens and that can be kind of tough but i have a solution for that because i created a video right here showing you how to plant things in small spaces to maximize your output and have great harvests make sure you subscribe over here it does help spread this content to other like-minded people like you and me thanks for watching we'll see you next time